Hi guys, so today I'm going to show you how to use EF lenses on uh, full frame cameras. You can pretty much hack any EFS lens to fit on a full frame lens. I've got my 55 to 250 here that I got last week. Uh, I shaved off the top of it, all right? Mm -hmm. And now I can take photos uh, with my Canon 60. Now it does vignette a little bit uh, at 55, but I can still use something like, I can still use from like 135 to 250 uh, pretty good. Another reason why I did this is I want to be able to also use with my Sony a6300. Uh, with the speed booster on the Sony a6300, you don't have so much room, so a lot of the EFS lenses will not fit. Now with the Sony a6300, um, this actually works out quite well, and there's actually no vignetting. On I can use full 55 to 250, and this works great for 4K videos uh, using the Super 35 millimeter. So that is another reason why you should hack EFS lenses, especially using a camera like an a6300 uh, or another brand of camera, but you want to use Canon EFS lenses. All right, another lens that I have done, uh, probably the easiest, is the EFS 24 millimeter. Uh, this one is really easy. All you have to do is use a wrench and pull out the plastic uh, lining. And now you'll be able to use this on a Canon 60. Now, now on a full frame, it will vignette a lot. Uh, but uh, the, the, the main reason I actually did it because it didn't fit my speed booster for my GH4 that I used to use. Um, so that's why I did it. So today what we're gonna do is um, hack my new lens that I just got today. This is a Canon 17 to 55 millimeter. Now, one of the benefits of using this lens is that it has image stabilization. And that's also another reason I'm using this one. A lot of the L lenses don't have image stabilization. So these lenses are so much better if you can get it to work with speed booster so I can use it with my Sony a6300. Primarily, this tutorial is really for videographers who wanna use EF lenses with speed boosters. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this rubber thing out. We just need to be able to um, take all this plastic lining out uh, until it's even with the contacts or less, uh, less than the contacts. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's go do this, baby. All right, guys, so usually you can do it uh, with a wrench of some sort. Got this smaller wrench like this may work better. All right, now with a zoom lens, you'll wanna make sure you don't scratch the lens. So zoom it out, all right, now you can get to it. Uh, with the 24 millimeter, you can just pop it out. With this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just, just try to pull it out, all right? Or I may have to crack it a little bit. Again, this is not for everybody. Uh, you may ruin your lens if you do it wrong. Uh, we're really just hacking this, so. All right, let's go ahead and try it. So I'm gonna probably just, just kind of pull this whole thing out. Just kind of pull on it and just pull it out. Whoop! That works. <laughs> so that that's that's pretty much it for this lens. All right, sometimes the whole thing doesn't come out. And what happens is that you may have to saw it off or something. But in my case, it just came off. And now it's perfect, you'll see, All right, with the zoom lens. Now this lens does protrude out, so I'm not sure if it'll work per perfectly, but let's go ahead and try it real quick. Okay guys, so here's the moment of the truth. I can't believe I did it so quickly. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in to my Canon 60. Fits. All right, I'm gonna actually zoom it out a little bit and then test it out. And autofocus is working. All right, it's vignetting. I'm gonna go ahead and put it at 17 and works fine. Wow. 17, autofocus works. Now this, this whole lens will vignette with a full frame 6D. So it's sort of useless to do it if you're gonna do it with the full frame. Like I said, I'm gonna use it 
uh, with my Canon, sorry, with my Sony A6300 uh, with the speed booster. And let me go ahead and see if it fits. Fits perfectly. And let's actually see, ooh, it vignettes a lot. So 17 to 55, <laughs> pretty much useless. All right, this was gonna be my primary usage, but you can see it's vignetting. Oh, I spoke too quickly. It actually does work. I had it in photo mode. So if you're gonna use it for photos, it will vignette. But since in 4K mode, uh, 4K mode, this is 30 frames per second. It works just fine, no vignette. Just a tiny bit of vignetting, uh, pretty much none at 55. So very usable. Now, let me go ahead and put it, now it's actually cropping because I have it at 30 frames per second. Let me put it at 24 frames per, uh, let me put it at 24 frames per second. And now it's vignetting, all right? But that is because of the speed booster. So if you're using like a Sigma uh, MC11 without uh, boosting the speed, it'll work. So let me go ahead and switch it out on my camera that I got it on right now. And now it's working flawless because the speed booster is not um, bring it down one stop. So this is at full 24 frames per second, super 35 with an MC11. I'm able to make use of an EFS lens 17 to 55. I will have a review of this lens, but the reason why I got this is because it has the IS and my Sony A6300 uh, does not have any kind of stabilization. Sometimes I wanna make videos without having a tripod. Let me go ahead and um, demonstrate. You'll see that that looks very, very stable. Now, as soon as I can turn off the uh, stabilizer to show you, and you'll see it's a lot more jittery. All right, turn it back on and very, very stable. Anyway, now you know how to hack EFS lenses to work with a full frame or make it work with your Sony. There's probably a lot of situations because of the crop factor on certain cameras like the A6300. If you use like an MC11, it won't vignette and you can make full use of 1755 at full super 35 millimeter mode, 24 frames per second. So that is really cool. I love my Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter uh, which I'm actually recording on. And the problem with this one, I will really not be able to take videos because there's no stabilization while walking around. Now with 17 to 55, this has higher range than the 18 to 35. I lose a little bit of aperture uh, constant f2.8, but I gain a ton with image stabilization. So in a few months when I go to CES, I will be able to use uh, this lens without a tripod. That's the goal. That's why I got this lens and I'll be able to take stabilized videos without a tripod. All right, you can use a gimbal too. I have the Beholder DS1, but it is so heavy. It's not practical to like really carry around all day, but this setup, um, not bad at all. I'm actually really digging it. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, you can reach me on Twitter. I will see you guys soon. As always, stay. <laughs> cameras. Click here to subscribe.